Welcome to our podcast, Parenting by the Pint. Enjoy the show. Greetings, Minivan Mafia. Lauren and I are longtime friends from Chicagoland that love getting together to chat about life, kids, family, and beer. Each week, we'll feature a brewery and sample at least two of their beers. We'll also discuss a variety of topics ranging from parenting, pop culture, travel, marriage, and just about anything else that comes to mind. Hi, everybody. Welcome back. Hey, everybody. Here we go. Yeah. All right. We're going to drink some Anderson Valley Brewing Company tonight, which I had never heard of until I saw it at my local bottle shop. Um, No, I will say, I know you're going to tell me about Anderson Valley and we're going to open one, but I will say I have kind of a funny story about you giving me cans Uh. of this when we (laughs) talked about uh, recording for it. Yes. Uh, I had a moment of panic at one point because you gave this to me a while ago where I was like, did I drink it? Yeah. And, <laughs> like, because I don't even remember what she gave to me. Like, and <laughs> the funny thing is the second beer we're going to drink, I mm-hmm. had a can of that beer in my refrigerator for oh, like what are the two odds? years at one point. That's like crazy. just randomly. Yeah. And uh, so then when I was looking for the beer that you said I had, the Sanderson Valley <laughs> Brewing, yeah. I found, I saw that can and I was like, no, that's not it. That's, that's the <laughs> one I've is. had forever. It's but the... it is because somebody eventually drank that. I don't know if it was me <laughs> yeah. or if it was, I don't remember because it was, sure, sure. it was in yeah. there for forever and it was forever ago that it got <laughs> drank. Well, that's pretty funny. Well, they only started distributing to uh, Illinois like two years ago. So it, oh, well, it, then it maybe probably it was... was the first like... It was probably early. My husband probably brought it home when it first kind of showed first, up. Yeah, showed up. Yeah. And mm-hmm. it maybe just lingered, maybe saying it was in there for two years and then it, it took, uh, it was gone for well, two years. He, he might have been, be. yeah. But he might have been Too like, long. huh, never heard of this. I'm going to try it and brought it home because they just started distributing not too long yes. ago. To I Illinois. would say that's a very yeah, reasonable possibility. I think that's probably, but I had never heard of it until I bought it. So, um, is that a, <laughs> Boonville, California. So it's not not local. Haven't heard sure. of it, but it's only about two hours northwest of Napa. Um, oh, okay. So yeah, so we could have seen it when we were out in that area. Oh, but, but who had time for that? Yeah, I mean... well, that was wine, and not beer. So <laughs> and if you know, we were gonna go to a brewery, we were gonna go to Russian gonna River. That. Yeah. So. <laughs> yeah. But, but yeah, so Boonville, California, Anderson Valley Brewing. Uh, so mm-hmm. that's what we're going to drink today. And we're going to, I don't know, reflect on what what is to come, I guess. What is to come? We're recording right about the last day of school for us, uh, you guys. Yeah. So just to give you a timeline, and we're going to we're gonna share some of our summer plans and things like that. But let's open this Amber Ale. Yeah, Shall Boont we? Amber Ale. Boont. So Boont... Is a uh, boont is essentially boont or boontling. Oh shoot! Oh, careful! Mine's Lots exploding. of head on this one. Yeah. <laughs> well, I caught it in a blanket, which has to now go in the wash. Oh. Um, but oh. <laughs> <laughs> and back to my conversation. Nice and... save. <laughs> yeah, it's not on me, so I'll take oh, it as well. a win. But it's definitely gonna be washed when i'm done here anyways so boont or boontling um is essentially like this weird like very 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 local like language that the locals came up with um at the turn of like the last century and it only has like 1600 words and at the time only like had less than 100 people who could even like speak it um, but in like the 60s, I guess it got the attention of a um, like a lexicon, lexicon professor from um, California State University. And it, I guess, became not popular, but it was just like an interesting fun fact type thing. Um, huh. But it's essentially it was like to to keep 
other people from being able to understand what they were saying. So, like, there were things that, like, a phone had a name because it was the first person in town who had that phone. And a a Jeffer is a large bonfire because there was somebody named Jeff who always built large fires. And, like, the bunch of just, like, weird local terms. (laughs) But that's what Boont is, is Boonville had like essentially their own language there's the coffee was called zeese and it was because there was a guy with a nickname of zeese who made bitterly strong coffee in town so that's just what they called coffee so it's just such a weird like um you know they had like i said it had about 1600 different words but a lot of them were very specific to local people or you know local things at the time and like I saw watched a video of someone speaking it and you can't understand anything because oh, all man. the words aren't regular words. But so like a hundred people can understand what this guy said. Um, I love that. Yeah. I, so anyway, so lie. that's what Boont actually is referring to is their very local lexicon of, you know, um, unique terms. So, I love it. Anyway, all right. That's awesome. Drink- drink our boot amber ale <laughs> let's do it let's give this a try um hmm. i got a lot of like on the aroma it was a very sweet like malty very malty um, very malty. and i get that on the me. flavor as well like yeah. that's exactly I... what it smells exactly like it tastes and it i does. don't always say that about beer in no. fact we almost never say that we're always yeah. like wow this aroma is really misleading <laughs> right <And it's> <laughs> like it smells like really strong and it's a very mild beer or vice ex- versa right this tastes exactly like it smells it smells very malty um it's got a great color to it i really enjoy it color. does yeah it's a really beautiful like light copper golden yeah. looking it's really, it is a nice looking beer. It's very pretty pretty. flavorful for an amber, I think. It's definitely very mm-hmm. malty. Um, almost roasted, though, too. Mm. Like, you know, like malt has its own flavor, yeah. but this almost feels, tastes like there's some something roasted in there. And maybe in the aftertaste, that's what I'm getting is a little bit mm. of roastiness. Um, yeah. No, I, I get that definitely. It, it's interesting. It's definitely an interesting beer. I mean, it's it's a it's an amber ale. If you like amber ales, you'll probably like it. But I feel like it has its own unique kind of flavors to it too. Nice. Yes, I uh, I get the roasty on the aftertaste too. Kind yeah. of like after you take a sip of coffee, roasty. Yeah, kind um, of. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah. I so I definitely get that. Interesting. Yeah. An interesting beer that I am enjoying. I will enjoy yeah, a little bit no, more of while we like while it. you tell me about. Yeah, yeah. Like I said, stuff. I had no idea who where Anderson Valley was or who Anderson Valley was. Uh, mm-hmm. They have been around since 1987. Oh, wow! So they're not new by any means. Like they were one of the first 20 registered craft breweries in the United States. Like they I was are... gonna say, nineteen eighty seven. That's like yeah. right before that class of eighty yeah. eight, which There's is like literally the big class. Yeah, of they were one of the first like handful of breweries, craft wow. breweries hmm. in, in the U S. They were independent. So, anyways, they opened the day after Christmas, nineteen eighty seven. Um, wow. founded by a guy named Ken Allen, who is no longer involved at all. He sold um the brewery back in twenty ten. Um, but it has most recently been bought in 2019 um, by its current owner named Kevin McGee. Um, He was a Stanford graduate. He was an attorney for 20 years and then decided Mm. he didn't want to do that anymore. Um, So he went uh, on after being an attorney to work at Jackson Family Wines, which is who owns Kendall Jackson Wines and a few others. Um, and then he left there after a number of years and took over an investment firm who specialized in wineries. So very much oh. into the wine kind of world, which makes sense in California, not far from Napa, that sure. general vicinity. Um, but then he also started a nano brewery in his garage in 2007. <laughs> um, of course he did. Uh, yeah. <laughs> um, 
of called course. Heldsburg Beer Company, and Heldsburg is very close to Napa. Um, oh, it, it, okay. We might have driven through there, actually. Oh, okay. um, and then, uh, again, he bought um, Anderson Valley Brewing in 2019. Um, so he does have that kind of wine, spirits, beer kind of background um, and, and took it over. Uh, some unique things about Anderson Valley Brewing Company, they were the first a uh, brewery to build a dedicated 18 hole disc golf course they have 28 uh, okay. acres of land um they have a bunch of outside lounge patio areas but they still have the disc golf course so if you want to grab a beer <laughs> and go play disc golf you can do it all in one place so, that's cool uh, i you know it's funny like people are really into disc golf that are really like like if you yeah, know, it's not or, my thing. like, but it is not, I do not have that. Although I bet you my kids would get really into that if they like started playing it. We do a lot of it. Frisbee. We play a lot of Frisbee at my house. So we really don't, but I feel you should like we get a good could. Frisbee, dude. Frisbee we've is like, the, we've got the land to do it. Like you can, you know, I mean, so, we yeah. bring a Frisbee like everywhere we go now. Like we bring we, one camping with yeah. us, but that's about it. But I mean, my I husband like will take do my youngest more. outside and they'll just like, you know, if it's like later in the day, but not mm-hmm. bedtime, For they'll sure. just like go outside and throw a Frisbee for like oh. 20 minutes or a half an hour just they to kind of get totally some fresh air. I totally like disc golf then. That is 100% yeah, a 100%. thing. 100%. It would very yeah. much be into. I, I feel yeah. like I need to get them into it before they go off to college because I think that's like a thing college yeah. kids do. There's a course in Lockport. There's one. Oh, of really? Them. It's like ranked. I don't know how they rank huh. them, but yeah, it's at the um cool. like the park district, like the yeah the whatever rec by the rec center, but it's all outside like forest preserve. But they have a disc golf course, so you could huh. totally come do that. That's so. cool. I did yeah. not know that. Maybe I mm-hmm. will bring yeah. that up. Maybe that will be added to the summer list. Add to the summer list. So, yeah, that we're um, going to hit on here. <laughs> I like it. I like it. All right. A few other fun facts, uh, and then we can talk about, you know, expound upon our plans. Uh, it was actually the world's first solar-powered brewery, and still is. That's um, pretty cool. I saw that on the can here, that it says yeah. solar-powered brewery. Mm-hmm. Yeah, so it's a, they, they are very into mm. sustainable energy. They operate... Um, their own self-contained water treatment system and they primarily if not completely pull water from their property they have 10 wells on their property that are sources of water so they use that water and then they have their own water treatment so that they're not wasting any water they have a nitrogen generator to help reduce co2 usage like a lot of other places, they use their grains to repurpose, you know, to feed cattle and stuff like that. Um, that's part of why they only use aluminum cans, because they're more okay. recyclable than glass. Um, okay. And they, um, yeah, so they're they're very much into all of that, like, sustainable energy, you know, type things. So That's pretty cool. I mean, more power to them. So, yeah, yeah. I can get on board with that. Good for you guys. Yeah, so so that's the general background of uh, Anderson Valley. Again, they're in Boonville, California, which is a tiny town that only has like a thousand people. So well, um, and a hundred of them very... speak a language none of us right, understand. No, exactly. <laughs> so, so the the unique things about uh, the the area in which this brewery is uh, is intriguing. But uh, yeah, totally. Yeah, so... that is not what I thought you were gonna say, Boont. <laughs> meant i was like i thought it was going to be like some (laughs) local creature or like something or like some sort of like uh like geological formation or i don't know i was like i wonder what a boot is and then when you were like oh it's a language i was like nope totally not (laughs) nothing you would ever think i didn't get that yeah yeah this this was a very unique brewery to research because i was like huh yeah well first of all you've been around for a long time and i've never heard of you <laughs> like no that's so that's crazy. cool the fact that it's sustained through all these years and they're not yeah huge but you know they're still a family owned and operated uh you know they're still an independent craft brewer so they're not owned by any big conglomerates or anything like that or big companies so yeah um yeah, so pretty cool, I think. So it's definitely yeah. unique. Yeah, the boont thing was definitely unique for sure. Yeah, that is 
Unexpected. Something that most <laughs> places definitely cannot, uh, you know, have or you're going to compare to. So, but sure. yeah, so if you're around that area and Anderson Valley Brewing Company, so, and their Amber Ale is pretty good. Yeah, yeah. it is. I'm, I'm looking forward to trying this second beer too. It's going to be too. good. I am. All right. So now that we've heard about Anderson Valley, California, let's, uh, let's talk about what, what we've got going on my kids are actually done with school so not are we even close to being done with school my children are now yeah you're summer break. you're done the hard summer part break. begins <laughs> yeah i'm literally like what am i gonna do with you people i like, know yeah, I, I mean still have this thing we call a job so right yeah you unfortunately guys. i mean you can't just be in the kitchen all day yeah, right. yeah. <laughs> nah. yeah, that was the other thing i was like crap i have to feed you guys every day oh, yeah like, i mean no so joke at school there. Yeah, they just buy lunch so i don't worry about making them a lunch or feeding yeah. them a lunch and now i'm like crap you're home i'm gonna have to like buy lunch food yeah. for you my youngest eats the cafeteria food and my oldest will not but he makes his own lunch oh yeah if if my so... kids aren't eating they aren't buying lunch they make their own lunch yeah so i so don't there's no in that i don't activity. make lunches during the yeah. school year i mean you know i guess i make lunch on saturdays or whatever yeah. you know but not but like... nearly as frequently so no. now i have to go grocery shopping yeah geez oh, oh my, my goodness crap. what do you want for lunches so that that's is on something... my agenda yeah i will say that is something that i would like to give myself a little bit more uh commitment to is my my cooking has really like it's just like non-existent i like don't cook anything these days and i really like i enjoy cooking it's an enjoyable activity for me and Mm -hmm. i used to pretty much always cook at least one weekend day and at least one weekday and then my Mm -hmm. husband does a couple of days when he's off Sure. and then we were going out to dinner with my family about once a week so if you add all of that up we get to almost every day there's yeah. one or two days there where sometimes it's like ah frozen pizza you know and then, oh, i don't totally. count that as like cooking a meal it's but no. i you know i make but something I'm not it's not like i'm starving them but it's not an elaborate three or four yeah. course you know yeah, yeah, yeah. offering yeah. it's certainly not um yeah. that's probably gonna be i've been trying to plan out my meals for the week so that yeah, I take stuff out of the that's freezer. A big part. Yeah. But when I don't, it's like, oh crap, what am I feeding you people tonight? Yeah. So today was like spaghetti and meatballs, vegetables, garlic bread, like, you mm. know, and that's a pretty normal staple. That in our is house. pretty good. That's a pretty um, good one. Yeah. Tomorrow's my probably kids... literally going to be frozen pizza because we yeah, don't have any time. Right. So, yeah. yeah. My kids are all over the place with still being kind of picky once in a while. So Mm. I do run into that a bit. Um, It's better. I will say they're getting older. It's getting better. Yeah. Um, But it's still, you know, it's still floating under the surface there. So I run into a situation where like my oldest doesn't like a lot of like sauces and Mm. stuff like that. So like if I make a chicken dish and it has a sauce, sauce. I have to like make his just like grilled and then and Mm -hmm. You know, I mean, sometimes that's no big deal and I don't mind doing it. Sometimes I'm just like, this is such a waste of my time. Yeah, no, I totally get it. Yeah. Um, we, uh... But he's even kind of getting a little bit more, you know, a little more open minded. I can't be too judgmental because I've always been a very picky eater. True. I am better as an adult mm-hmm. than I yeah. was at his age. I will definitely <laughs> say that. I can survive almost anywhere. That is not my preferred way of being but sure. i can survive almost anywhere at this point you can take me to almost any restaurant and, and i can like something figure yeah. it figure it out it may not yeah. be like the best most fulfilling meal i've ever but had you but can i eat. can like be a grown-up yeah. about it <laughs> but uh yeah. not when i was younger i mean when i was younger you could have been like hey do you want to go to this place and i would have been like no i'm not gonna no. i'm not gonna yeah. go there because i won't no. eat yeah um so i yeah. do actually kind of have that on my summer agenda is to try to try to put a tiny bit more effort into like the cooking meals mm. uh especially because there's going to be probably one more day a week that I'm home from yep. work uh usually in the summers I have like a day where I'm just off each week nice. okay. uh to balance out my husband's off a couple of days and then my mom will do a day with the kids and and you know my husband also will close on some shifts where he works evenings and i'll Mm -hmm. like work the morning for a while and then we'll kind of split a day so 
so I, you know there'll be at least one more day there where I could hypothetically make a meal and then hopefully that day <laughs> I do that yeah. yeah that sounds like a good plan yeah that's we're currently in the midst of trying to figure out our schedule for summer mm, so, yeah I'm only on the edge of figuring that out which off, is crazy cool yeah and I you know have to be in the office days and they can't mm-hmm. stay home by themselves and we're not my husband's there yet, at the no. firehouse on certain days so we're like yeah. trying to work this out so that's my current headache is yeah scheduling yeah I, our, I i can sympathize with that yeah, the the twins last year told me that they are too old to go to summer camp because the one we sent them to was like daycare they said and yeah i think you told me that that they were like we're not doing that again (laughs) so i'm like well what am i going to do with you people i know right my oldest at least has summer school for june um but it's only from like 8 to 12 so it's a half a day so i still need to figure out like if i'm in the office you know somebody has to get him on and off the bus and yeah all that and then July, he has summer camp from nine to three, actually. So that's oh, like a full well, day. That's good. So yeah. that's fine. But then the twins, what do I do with the twins? So our agreement now is that they have to read an hour a day every day. We're going to go mm-hmm. through a handful of books because I feel like they can stand to improve their reading comprehension skills slightly. And the only way I know how to do that is to have them read books. And then ask questions about them. So, oh, I like. I mean, uh, you know, that's so. your. Yeah, I think your perspective is pretty right on with that. So, and I don't I, want them uh, sitting in front of their TV all day uh, long. Yeah, so. I. Well, I mentioned I will be taking the laptops away from my kids, mm-hmm. um, so they won't be having. They won't have their school laptops for entertainment purposes over mm-hmm. the summer. Mm-hmm. My oldest. Uh, we have been fighting the same battle for several months about him changing his musical instrument from the clarinet to the oh, saxophone. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And I finally, I guess you could say gave in, but I'd probably say it's more of a compromise um, between the two of us. I rented a saxophone for him for the summer and he oh. is to take lessons and work through a book that I bought him. Um, by the end of the summer so he has like we haven't sat down and gone through the book and been like this many pages a week or this many you know and I don't care if he does you know eight pages a week or eight pages one day and then doesn't play for six more I don't you know what I mean like yeah we're gonna come up with some sort of standard you know that he has to meet each week to kind of maintain this saxophone plan because my attitude is I don't want you to switch to a different instrument if you're not even going to pick the thing up all summer true like yeah no I definitely agree. so that was the deal so at the end of the summer before he goes off to band camp which he will have in early August um Mm -hmm. he has to have basically decided although I did sort of decide that even though he may switch instruments, I'm not 100% sure I'm going to sell his clarinet right away. Oh, okay. I think I'm going to hold on to it um, for several reasons. One, because I think he might still possibly play it once in a while. But two, also, it is an opportunity maybe for little brother if he mm. decided he wanted to join band. Yeah. Um, He doesn't start middle school this next fall, but the following one. And I kind of was like, well... I don't know. He did not immediately shoot down that idea, my youngest. He wasn't like, uh, no, that won't be happening because I'll be on the soccer field, which is normally what he says to me when I suggest <laughs> any activity that is not soccer. <laughs> so no, I don't have po- time for that. <laughs> so it's a possibility is what we're saying. Yeah, so my, we're going to uh, hold on to the clarinet for a little while and see what happens. My son there. wants to play the trumpet. Ooh, we shall see how that goes. He, they may start have access band next to year. a trumpet. Okay. If you mm-hmm. let me just say that that was the instrument that my niece played in middle oh, school, and so okay. there's a possibility that trumpet is somewhere if in my it's, brother's it's house. Still in existence. Let me know yeah. because that <laughs> is what my youngest so if, yeah. wants to play, and he it will start find its band. Way. That that would be great. He will start band next year because they start okay. it in fifth mm-hmm. grade. 
Yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Because yeah. okay. our that's middle school for us is fifth grade. Right. So yeah. So he will have an elective of band. So that's um, great. And you think yeah. maybe that's what he wants to do? Is he already band? said that was what he wants. Oh, to do. you're yeah. locked in. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Well, so, or, we'll yeah. talk about this trumpet thing yeah. later. But anyways, but, we'll discuss. But yeah. yeah, so we we I got a lot of yeah, opinions. <laughs> we uh, we have our recorders home from school because they apparently <sighs> learned that this year. Uh, <laughs> and my son decided to practice one day, and I was like, "This is painful." Oh, uh, yeah. Um, no. So yeah, luckily I think we've moved on from that. That's but, cool. Yeah, yeah. No, I didn't. Um, I didn't have anybody ever practice the recorder at home. You and know, like only my son a, was even able to bring it home my daughter they kept him at school i have like a disproportionately high quantity of recorders for some reason because <laughs> okay because so my oldest was during his year for the recorder mm. was the covid year so they like uh, gave it to him before he left for the school like the end of the school year uh-huh. and then when he went back in the fall they gave him another one oh. <laughs> so i got two so from got him two <laughs> and my younger son he played the recorder in third grade at his previous elementary uh, school and then they gave him another one in fourth, in fourth. so <laughs> i think i have four that's a lot of recorders, recorders that you will never need somewhere. again. <laughs> I don't know where they are. I never, think the two of my older need. sons are both like on his bookshelf in his room. Why are they? I don't know why they're taking up space there. And then the two of my youngest, I think, are both still legit in his backpack. He has just been traveling every single day with both of them. <laughs> just in case. Might need an extra. You never, you never know. know when you need to pull that out, like on right? the bus to scare off the birds or something. I don't know. <laughs> oh, maybe the, maybe it'll scare the cicadas away. Play it really high pitched and it. go outside. They probably so like random. it. Yeah, yeah. Actually, no. Let's not do that. We don't want to attract yeah. them. That'll be like their mating call. Yeah. Or something. Well, you just hit yeah. the nail on the head for my next subject matter, which is cicada, as my son calls them, cicadas instead of cicadas. And I'd really like it if everybody would start cicadas. doing that. Start We've just cicadas. been asking how cicada <laughs> cicada apocalypse is going. That's what it's we've been saying. Getting a little intense here in Bolingbrook, you guys. I keep telling Lauren that yeah. they're really surfacing, kind of like in force the last day or two, um, and it's getting pretty intense. My garage has them. Um, they're on it on the outside thank uh, god yeah, yeah, yeah not in my house oh my god I don't oh even that would be bad no no if no, i no. see a I'm cicada not inside okay my that. house You're i will go to a freak hotel out. yeah no. <laughs> my one of my I handle that one of my employees sent a video and they are everywhere by her and yeah. she lives i mean she only lives in villa park so it's not like it's yeah. far far i think but, it's yeah, just a matter everywhere. of time I think I know, you just like I, know. I don't live in a if bubble. You haven't I really want seen to. it. Yeah, it's I know. Well, and I work in Oak Lawn mm-hmm. and I don't see them out there at all. I haven't seen oh. them like on the trees. But if you drive through my neighborhood, the trees are like just covered Ooh. in the little like ill gross Ooh. cicada yeah. shells. I you know where they came out. Two today, and that is all that yeah. I have seen. Oh man. And they were both dead. Not, oh, not the shells I mean, them. of them. They were just <laughs> dead and oh, i don't know yeah. how they died they were just dead one yeah. was just like hanging out one was attached to like the wall and that's it and i've been like mm. walking around my pool and my the yard like and i haven't seen any more yeah I'm, I'm sure no, they are yeah. coming but yeah. i'm hoping they stay in the very very back of my yard because that's where all the trees are i was gonna so... say i've only really seen them on or around trees yeah. i mean like yeah i said there's some sticking on my garage but that's because well, my no garage is like under a garage. tree yeah yeah exactly. so like yeah that's sort of why that's the case but um yeah. i've only really and you know what's funny is that i drove around my neighborhood yesterday and again kind of this morning when i was i promised my son i would drive him to the bus stop because quote the cicadas freak him out <laughs> and he only has two days of school left so i was like like, whatever fine yeah Yeah, i'll take you to the bus stop it's fine yeah i should Mm -hmm. get up anyway um Mm -hmm. so uh but i did like a lap the opposite direction around my neighborhood after i dropped him at the bus stop i was heading back home to like make coffee or something and um there it's like it's not every tree it's like Mm. 
And it's not like, oh, the big trees that are old, you know, right. because these guys were out 17 years ago, right? right? So you right, would right. think so that they would be the in places. Trees, Some of yeah. the trees are little tiny little stick, the, oh, the width of my arm trees that oh, the man. village planted like in the last oh, year or two. Those trees are knocking out there. That's not. Where that's did not they good. come from, man? Yeah. Like, so right. I don't know what the huh. rhyme or reason. Name, I am not like a bug here. specialist. Yeah, I, I got nothing. I'm sure there's an explanation. I know yeah. somebody told me, I think it was my youngest, that they feed off of some sort of, it's not sap. It's like some kind of moisture it's, that trees yeah, are putting out. It's something with the trees. Yeah, because I agree. I was I read that somewhere as well. Um, yeah. Gross. We haven't. Yeah. <laughs> so I was more concerned because I'm like, they're going to be all up in our pool filter. And thus yeah. far, my husband has only found one. And that's it. Yeah. I hope so... I, I mentioned. So I have a metal frame pool that I've probably talked about on the podcast a handful of times over the mm-hmm. years, although it's been a while, I think, because I didn't set it up last summer because we were yeah. gone on vacation for a yeah, lot of the summer. Of it, yeah. Um, but I do t- put it out and take it down after some, you know, before and after summers. And uh, I was talking to my son, my youngest, the other day, and I went, you know, I kind of was like, oh, I should really put the pool up because it was hot over the weekend. It was hot on Sunday. Mm-hmm. And uh, I was like, I should get the pool up. We should swim. And then he was like, no, 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 <laughs> we're not doing that. And I was like, what? You know, because he's 10. He doesn't want to swim. Right. Like, not till the cicadas are gone. Ah, uh, gotcha. And I was like, oh, okay. Well, then I'm not going to waste my time doing it. Yeah. <laughs> you don't want to go swim. You don't want to. Sure. Okay. Fine. Yeah. I will just sit in the air conditioning, dude. It's cool. Like, yeah, that sounds fine with me. But yeah, so I'm, I'm I'm still somewhat torn about that. I guess you can keep me posted on how your pool is doing, and maybe we'll skip over there once or twice this yeah, summer. Yeah, yeah, not enjoy your wood. cool water. It's open, it's clean, and there are no bugs in it. So yeah, well, well, and I've given my brother goes. some grief about his pool. He has not opened his pool yet. Oh. Um, but this weekend is Memorial Day weekend, so oh. we're you know I don't know what. I still don't even know our Memorial Day plans because I like to it's play chicken rain, with my so brother. So I just kind of was like, eh, I don't know if I care because yeah, it's I not don't know supposed if... to be that warm on Monday and mm. it's supposed to, it's, yeah. It's supposed to so, rain. Yeah, I don't know. I mean, that could know. change tomorrow. I'm sure so. we'll do like a little something, like a mm. dinner of some kind at his, I would guess at his house because my oldest his birthday is only like two weeks oh, wow. and some change away yeah. and we're doing like a family thing we're not doing a big kid birthday party with him because he doesn't want to he yeah, doesn't okay. want to do that That's he's too, he's a big boy now i guess or yeah, whatever whatever so we're doing like a family thing with my in-laws and my, and my family nice. and um probably like a one-on-one outing with him and a friend at some point over the summer but because we're going to have everybody over for his birthday, I think that lets me off the hook for Memorial Day because it's only like a week and a half before. I like that. That sounds good. So yeah. I, that's <laughs> my logic. So I'm not hosting any sense. family gatherings other than the birthday. Mm-hmm. Um, but to kind of like, you know, talk about my summer some more. Yes. I uh, We don't have any big trips. We did the big trip last summer. Yeah. Um, and that's not exactly why we're not doing one this summer. It sort of just played out that way. Mm-hmm. It's probably for the best because my brother is going to be gone for like three separate weeks over oh, the really? summer. Oh, really? Like Where spread out over. He's everywhere. Oh, man. <laughs> well, I'll tell you about at least one of his little travels. Yeah. He is going on a Boy Scout camping trip with my nephew. It is oh. a week oh. at Boundary Waters up in Minnesota. Yep. Mm-hmm. Wow. It's that's like a... you canoe all day and then you camp and then yeah. you like canoe and ugh. that sounds um, not like a vacation. So no, my I'm out. friend <laughs> said that the biggest problem is mosquitoes, which. Oh, ugh. that sounds bad, too. I mean, <laughs> all I of can, those things I'm out on. <laughs> I can't picture anything worse. <laughs> I'd rather get eaten by a bear. Right? By no, I'm, I'm no, I'm good. I don't I don't need any uh, of that. Yeah. Yeah. So he's gonna be and the best part, worst part, <laughs> is there's literally no cell service of oh, any sure. kind. Yeah. So he's gonna be gone for an entire week of work and oh, I will be solo, yeah. which is fine. It's not yeah. like I can't it's just there are occasions where I'll text him and be like, Hey, what something, where do you order hey, this thing from? Right. Or you whatever. Can't do that. Yeah. 
there'll be none of that. And I was like, we should just close while you're yeah, gone. Right. And he was just Take like, whatever, you're going to be fine. And I'm like, I'll be fine. I'm just going to hate it. <laughs> All right. Yeah, exactly. This is not enjoyable it's not for me. It's not fun. And I'm going to miss you. <laughs> it's like probably the longest I'll go without talking to my brother ever. Well, like, yeah. I don't know. Wow. Yeah. Yeah, without cell phone service, that's probably true. Yeah, yeah. I mean, since mm -hmm. the advent of cell phones, I've probably, mm -hmm. this will probably be the longest I'll go without some mm -hmm. communication of sure, some sure, kind. Sure. Yeah. So we'll see. So yeah. we don't really have any big trips um, for mm -hmm. us. We do have a couple of like long weekends. We're going to go to Galena with my family in June. Um, Thanks. Yeah, just a low key. We used to go. There's a balloon, like a balloon festival in Galena every like Father's Day weekend. Oh. It's not Father's Day weekend this year. It's like the following weekend, I think. Oh. Hmm. And so we're not doing it. Um, yeah. But we are going to go to Galena for a couple of days and just kind of, you know, just get away. Good food, yeah. walk the mm -hmm. town, maybe go horseback riding. I don't know. My brother and I, every time one of us brings up an activity that we as children used to do in Galena when we would go, sure. mm -hmm. one of us is like, ugh, pass. <laughs> like, he says to me, um, are we going to go fishing? Because we used to go fishing. We would rent a pontoon mm. boat and we'd go fishing on the lake. Mm. And this was a big thing for my dad. He was like really yeah. into that. Although he used to complain about it like crazy because he spent the <laughs> whole time just like baiting hooks right, and you didn't doing want fish to, surgery didn't want to do it. and yeah. stuff like that. It was never like a leisurely for activity him. Yeah. for him. So I'm kind of surprised he wanted to continue doing it. But he, you know, we kept going and we would even have gone over the years with the grandchildren and mm -hmm, stuff like that. Mm -hmm. And, you know, my father has since passed away. It was like two years ago, but we haven't been back to Galena, and, oh. <laughs> which is really the only place we ever went fishing. And my brother yeah. comes to me and he goes, are we going to go fishing? And I just <laughs> went, ugh, do we have to? <laughs> <laughs> and he was like, I don't know. And I was like, I can tell you right now that neither of my kids have care. any desire to do that. <laughs> they do not care about fishing at all. And he goes, well, I don't think my kids will. And then between that date and the last time I saw his kids, all three of them have separately asked me if we are going fishing. On oh, trip. are you serious? <laughs> yeah. Are we going to go fishing? And I'm just like, no. Do and they're just like, what? But why not? And they're like real disappointed. So and I'm they kind actually like, want to go fishing. Okay. Yeah. But I'm kind of like, well, you guys can go fishing. Yeah. Your my family, family have to can go watch TV. No. Yeah. <laughs> but, or do anything else. Do yeah. Literally anything else, <laughs> but not go fishing. And then I said, because my brother brought up fishing, and then I mm -hmm. said, they have this uh, activity at, uh, in Galena at the ski resort called the Alpine Slides. You mm, and I have done yep, this. Yeah. Um, because I yeah. probably we probably went there when I took yeah, you to Galena totally. as a kid. Yep. And many, um, many years ago. <laughs> yes. And they are super dangerous. Oh my God, so dangerous. <laughs> Uh, it's basically like a water the burns slide you get you drive from this down a like... cart on. <laughs> yeah. yeah, and I have been severely injured <laughs> yes. by this thing in the past enough that like I could show you scars as right. a forty two year old yes. woman that exactly. I still have yeah. um, on my oh. arms and legs from yeah. burning them on this for more than thirty years activity. ago. Yeah, <laughs> I me whenever I'm Lauren and I are in travel groups together. Whenever somebody mentions the alpine slide in galena because galena does come up a fair it amount does. in some yeah. of these groups um i'm always like just be really careful it's kind of <laughs> dangerous yeah. like you know yeah. <laughs> also yeah. it's gotten absurdly expensive oh, we I, I used to go it, it was, was not, like yeah. it was like five rides for like yeah. eight dollars or something yeah, and now cheap. it's five rides for like Forty dollars. Oh, it's like Lauren. It's so. Ex no, I'm just I'm so. Good. I was like, can we please not do the alpine slides? One because it's dangerous. Yeah. Two because it's expensive. And three because it's really far from Galena. It's yeah, like it's a half not... hour drive from yeah. the town in this right. little like winding country road. road. Yeah. <laughs> so a lot of negatives there. So I don't know. I've pointed out all the things we're not going to do. Not going to do. Yeah. I don't know what we are going to do. Maybe go swimming. Maybe go horseback riding, like I said. Mm -hmm. There is like a goat yoga place or like a goat farm thing that I threatened my brother I was going to sign us all up for. But I don't know if that's going to. I think you go on a hike with the goats. Okay. Um, 
And then maybe I'm, kayaking or canoeing, even though my brother sure. probably is not going to want to do that because he's going to do so much of that. So much of that in Minnesota. A few weeks yeah. later, yeah. yeah. Um, but yeah. that's kind of you know. Yeah. Well, I'll I'll Galena. pick your brain again. Uh, closer to it, we are not staying in Galena. We are staying in Iowa for a long weekend in August because. Mm. My son wants to do, he wants to go, so we're trying to hit a bunch of different states, so they're looking at things that they want to do in each state, so my okay. son wants to go to the Field of Dreams movie site, oh, and okay, cool. the weekend we're going to be there, they have, like, it's not a professional baseball game, they have four weekends a summer that they do games with, like, actors that recreate, like, the ghost oh. scene from, like, the ghost players from the movie, Okay. Um. And there's one night game a summer, and we are happening to be there for oh. the one night game the oh, summer. That's pretty so good. So we're going to do that, but we're probably going to spend a day in Galena and, like, do something, hang out there. We'll do some things in, like, Dubuque and, you know, and then yeah. just hang out at the campground and, like, relax for a day. So um, I will make dinner reservations Clo- a little well, bit closer. It's I May, haven't done but... this, but I've heard that ghost tours in Galena are Ooh. really awesome. Okay, I would be up for that. So I, yeah, so I would, I, I've been looking into it slightly. I don't know what the like consensus is among my family, whether or not that's something they fun or not. I know my, my immediate family. Definitely do. Yeah, that. I know your kids would yeah. love it because they yeah, love stuff sure. like that. Yeah. My kids would be into that, would be. Mm-hmm. Um, I don't know about my brother's family and my mom. They might be like, no, no scary yeah. stuff. But that's just kind of, yeah. I, I would be guessing. But then, sure. you know, it could just be whoever wants to go do the thing. Yeah. We don't you all know? have to do it together. Yeah. My parents yeah. are actually going to come out to Iowa with us. So oh, if cool. we did want to leave a kid or somebody wants to come, et cetera, like we could, you guys split could split up if needed. Mix. Yeah. Yeah. That's yeah. cool. So- yeah, but that's that's yeah. later in the summer. That's that's like our last trip of the summer before ah, school starts. That's so, cool. Yeah. But yeah, the the beginning of our summer is mostly lacrosse tournaments. Yes. So we have three you out of town <laughs> lacrosse tournaments that will take us to Indianapolis for one, mm-hmm. uh, and then it will take us to Michigan, but only like two hours away, Michigan. So. And then the last one is north of Detroit, Michigan. Ooh, so we're talking like that's a six, like Canada. six hour drive. So what we're going to do is go oh, into right. Canada. Yeah. So <laughs> it's Duh, like 35 minutes from Canada, literally. So we're, we, for, so the beginning of our summer is mostly lacrosse. I think we've got a June tournament and two July tournaments. Okay. Maybe, something like that. We are doing every 4th of July, around the 4th of July, somewhere around that vicinity, we usually go and visit my husband's uncle who lives near Indiana Beach, which is just a small okay. amusement park in Indiana. Oh, yeah. Um, this year, two other families are coming with us. We go camping and we go to the drive-in nice. and we go to the oh. amusement park and, you know, hang out at the campground, which has like a bunch of stuff there. So... We are doing that with some other families this year, which will be nice. And then, yeah, we've got the two more lacrosse tournaments. And oh but boy. what's cool? <laughs> yeah, so much, so much lacrosse. Um, yeah. I mean, my son loves it, and that's definitely his sport, and he will continue playing. And he's gotten actually pretty good at it. That's um, good. Ob- that's like, really good. Objectively good, not just because he's my kid. Good. Like yeah. last game, the opposing we lost, but the opposing coach came up and was like. Your your goal you're like your goalie's outstanding. Like wow. he's that's so... a huge compliment. We've, that's we've really had awesome. Multiple coaches from other teams come up to us and be like, Your your goalie's really, really good for especially for this age. Um so if the rest of his team could just get their stuff together, that would be great. But yes, you know I he's improving <laughs> but yeah so we're gonna take a cool trip we're gonna drive up go to the lacrosse tournament for the weekend and then we're gonna got everybody's passports we're all good we're awesome. set and we're gonna go and we're taking the camper so we're gonna drive into canada and stay near toronto for two nights and stay near oh, Niagara nice. falls for two nights and then we're gonna swing back around into the u.s and stop in ohio for the First preseason game of the season at the <gasps> Football Hall of Fame. Oh my god. Me, me and my son are going. So 
That's we're awesome. To, we're going to the game. So good for yeah. you, dude. Preseason's so fun. Right? And like I fun. mean that's a football hall of fame. And it's yeah, like that's it's awesome. a, it's the Hall of Fame game. Like they're actually that's their that's their first preseason game this year. And we, we didn't plan it around that, but I was looking for campgrounds for that day because we're gonna stop on the way from niagara falls to home and we're like we're uh-huh. not gonna do that in one drive in one day so we'll sure. we'll stop and then like it popped up like hey you know what's going on in ohio this day and i was like well that's a coincidence uh, yeah. um and then i was like I mean, if we're here, I feel like we need to go. So Yeah, I almost <laughs> did that with our Lake Michigan Loop trip. I was going to reverse our trip order and have us go into Wisconsin first because oh. there was going to be like a like a soccer game in oh. Green Bay. Oh, cool. And it was going to be like uh, two like European big, huge oh, teams, like man. playing a friendly, like an exhibition sure, sure. game. A friendly, yeah, 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 totally. Good. But uh, yeah. a friendly, I know, I say I know, it, you I know understand. what I mean. Yep, I understand. <laughs> Not everybody. Yeah. It's funny because my son's soccer coach says friendly uh-huh. all the time. Like oh, he'll really? be like, oh, do you guys want to play a friendly on Saturday? There's another team that invited us to come we're, meet we're up We're playing play. a friendly on Tuesday, but in the Lacrosse, <laughs> and I just, but yeah. <laughs> I just love the word. I yeah. love that fr- that word yeah. friendly to describe like exhibition it. games. I I'm going to tell my husband he needs to refer to it as that, actually. It's a friendly. <laughs> it yeah, a friendly. it took me a it minute totally when is. the coach said it. I was yeah. like, oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> friendly, I love it. I love it. That's fantastic. Yeah. But yeah, we are going to fill our summer with a little bit of soccer, mm-hmm. not quite so much traveling. Our son, my son is playing in a league that's just in Joliet this summer. Oh, okay. So all of our games are in the same place, which is that's nice. Cool. It's yeah. very competitive. I wouldn't mm-hmm. I wouldn't rest on my uh laziness mm-hmm. this way if I felt like he wasn't being challenged. Yes, but until yeah. I reach the point where they're destroying every single team they're playing, I don't yep. I mm-hmm. love the teams they play against. I like the yeah. the referees are good. The fields are mm. decent. The uh, porta potty is abominable. Oh yeah. I have to go to my happy place. I'm just like sliding down an iceberg with penguins every time I go there because <laughs> I have to think about something idea. else. Yeah. I bring toilet paper in my mm. pocket of my clothes because I'm like, well, I I Maybe. can't go I there and yeah. there's none. I just then what I do you can't... do? Yeah, well, I get it. Yeah. I got to yeah. go to the bathroom. It's too, the field's too far away uh, from my house yeah. for oh, me yeah. not to use the bathroom at all the entire yeah. time. <laughs> yeah. I will say that. So my son plays in his regular season. So summer is travel. Regular season is it's, it's the local team, but they yeah. are playing against teams that are all very good teams and they are all north side like we are in glenview oh. the goki winnetka we were in last weekend oh like, wow okay. none of them are close like forest like okay nothing is close but i will say that all of their facilities are very nice so well, i mean because you they know, i'm not be. gonna say <laughs> um, what i yeah. want to say about lacrosse yeah. lauren yeah <laughs> no I, yeah it's definitely tell you about yeah. <laughs> dude it started as a rich kid sport like this is not a thing like that's why nobody around our area yeah. played it until like recently because it is definitely <laughs> blowing up a bit i've seen yes. a lot more lacrosse yeah. and references to lacrosse mm-hmm. just in my everyday life than i ever yeah. used to see i mean certainly when we were in oh, high school, it wasn't and a that, thing when we were in high school i don't that even was know if you could have told me what it was i, I mean, would have had honestly, no clue I would have been somebody, like lacrosse, rugby. What I don't, I wouldn't have even yeah, known. Yeah, I think I didn't somebody know anybody would have, that played them. Yeah. Probably, I heard about it at U of I. I know U of College I had a lacrosse is, team, yeah, and yeah. I know you know, and I think um, I want to say I probably just learned about it in the course of learning about all of these variety of sports yeah. that you just don't have at your high school. Like yeah. we didn't. Obviously, we totally Shepard did didn't not have lacrosse. Dude, no. um, <laughs> I don't not, like I said. I don't even know if I knew of a high school <laughs> that did. I, I I wonder when my so my kids high school has a very good team. They're actually going to state. They oh, just wow. won their That's game, awesome. their divisional, their whatever semifinals game today, and they will go to the state championship their next game. So they That's have fantastic. a very good lacrosse team, and my son will be moving to that after he gets through, you know, 
junior high. So, that's the goal, right? Yeah. To be playing on this team. Yeah. That's cool. He would he will definitely try out and if he continues to get good at it, he he will probably make it. But also what's cool is the team we switched to this year. We played for a different team the last three years and he switched yeah. to one that's the closest to our house and with a bunch of people he plays travel with. Um most of those kids will all go to high school together. So these oh, kids will have been playing nice. lacrosse together from like That's nine deadly. years old through into high school. And they will all be on like the same team for the next however many years until they get that's, to high school so like that's pretty awesome they'll have that's a pretty solid serious. team once they i get think there. there is a slight chance of that with my son's soccer team and middle school um mm-hmm. and yes probably high school because we all live in the same town but yeah. um but i think a lot of them are going to be at the same middle school as my son oh, will be okay um and I think that's going to make the middle school. My kids' middle school team is is known to be quite good. Oh, um, that'll I make it even to, better, though. Yeah, I talked to the PE mm. teacher for my older son at mm. one point, and had said something about how you know he was into s- some sports, but it was like karate, so he wasn't playing sure. like it a was team sport at the school. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Um, and. I was like, oh, but my youngest plays soccer and is really into it. And I know he'll want to try out for the soccer team here. And she was like, well, I hope he's good because the team is really good. Like, and has been for a really long time. And I was like, well, I hope he's good too. Yeah, I hope so too. (laughs) Um, They only have an eighth grade team at the school. They don't have like a JV or whatever they call the sixth and seventh graders or whatever. Um, So you have to try out for the eighth grade team as a sixth or seventh grade right right um but i did kind of put it in my brain that when they get to that point especially if a lot of his teammates are at the school at the same school and i'm going to approach the school about having they have a younger team team. too yeah Yeah, for sure i mean you know that makes sense and then of course my next question is going to be like is this a paid gig yeah right (laughs) are you looking to hire somebody to do looking for because at that point i think i'll know enough about soccer you'll have enough yeah that's fair by the i'm not there yet years and you'll be all right yeah Yeah. we got a couple years still so but yeah Yeah. definitely you should hear me cheer for my son's team it's about half like yelling things and it's about (laughs) half going is that offsides i think that was offsides like i'm talking to someone lacrosse has the same offsides too yeah (laughs) well yeah (laughs) you know when they're little they don't call those things yeah and when they get older they start calling that's like all they enforce all of the rules Mm -hmm. and I don't remember them calling it a whole lot last summer when he was wow. like in the eight and nine year olds. Yep. Now that he's with like the 10 and 11 year olds, mm-hmm. they're calling it all the yep. time. And yeah. the team we played against, this guy blew the whistle like so many times. Oh, for us. <laughs> and I was just like, wow, this is really boring. <laughs> yeah, like you're constantly you just getting a penalty. Yeah. yeah. Can we, can we progress here? Yeah. Yeah, that's same for lacrosse. They they start enforcing far more rules. However, you start being able to like hit people more the older the mm. kids get. Like the goalie, we were watching the U twelve team, which is the fifth and sixth grade team, and um, the goalie got out of the crease and just started beating somebody who had the ball Holy with the stick. And I and they're awesome. like, that's legal. And I was like, all right. <laughs> like, it. Good I will say know. even soccer as they get older gets a lot more physical. I mean, yeah. when they were playing together last summer and even in the spring when we played like just recreational soccer, mm-hmm. you know, you couldn't really grab on. You couldn't grab on at all. Like you yeah. could bounce off people, but you were not yeah. you were not to really like pull or push someone. Mm-hmm. And now I feel and we had a kid on our team then who's no longer on the team mm-hmm. who was like really rough. <laughs> and now I kind of wish that kid was back well, because he can do it now. Yeah, because that kid would just be throwing people across the field, and we need a little bit more of that. Like I could, you know, yeah. my kid's one of those kids that'll sometimes like go down, and I'm mm. like, you got to stay on your feet, dude. Yeah, you can't be going. That just slows you down. You're the fastest kid out there. You got to yeah, stay on your, your feet. feet, dude. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, no, so, it, yeah. we've learned so much more about sports in the last few years. It's but amazing. That definitely, sports uh, that we didn't know anything about. Yeah, yeah I right. Mean, I, didn't I, even watch soccer, I didn't watch soccer as a kid either. No, not, and but... now I've seen like two shows all dedicated to soccer. So, or foot, football. Yeah. Um, yeah. I, I, and you're the I, better for it. 
<clears throat> right? Oh, we finally sat down and had my kids watch Ted Lasso, but I controlled the remote so I could fast forward you, through the inappropriate yeah, part. Yeah, went through the adult stuff. But yeah. we that's good. did watch it, and they, they thoroughly enjoyed it, and oh, I feel like good. they got some lessons from it, and yeah, they definitely liked it. So it was worth the, like, controlling of the remote to, to get through the parts that I don't want to have to explain what they're doing or what this means. Um. So, but minus those parts, which... They're not as much in season three, actually. No. Like, there's not I feel like it kind of dwindles. There's yeah. like a couple places in one and two where it's obviously it's, it's, very yeah. noticeable. And, but, and um... then it's like not nearly as much. Like season three, I don't, I didn't fast forward through almost anything. Like, right. So um, if anything, it was more innuendo, but it wasn't as overt. So yeah. I wasn't like some of that either went over their heads or I wasn't as concerned with. But they definitely... Uh, yeah, they, they enjoyed it. So, but yeah, this summer I'm like, That's all good. right, so you need to get outside and do something for part of your day. You need to read. You need to make I like your that. brains work. Yeah, I like that. Uh, That's good. Then, Stimulate yeah. the mind. Yes, yes. But yeah, other Me than that. Me trying to get my son to pick up a musical instrument. <laughs> yes, yes. But uh, otherwise, we don't have a lot of major trips planned for next yeah. this summer. So. Well, that stuff all sounds pretty cool, though. We yeah. are going to do a Green Bay trip at the end of the summer uh, with my in-laws, mm-hmm. hypothetically. I mean, that is the plan. That's the intention. All of us to go. And we rented a house. Um, okay. And we have a little while before we would have to, quote unquote, cancel if if sure, we sure. changed plans. My in-laws are kind of on the fence because my father-in-law had some medical issues that he's mm-hmm. recovering pretty well from. But, you know, it's still you a while know. away. Yeah. Um. So we're sort of like, that's the plan. And the hope is to go to family night in Green Bay, which is a, oh, nice. a an annual tradition there where they do like a practice and fireworks and all these like family activities. Um on like nice. a saturday night oh that's cool in the stadium so it's in lambeau field and tickets are like 10 bucks a person oh, sweet. so that's it's awesome. like really cheap it's supposed to be really fun you get to see like kind of the team puts the uniforms on mm-hmm. and like does the whole thing and it's just like a little they call it family night because you just go there with your family and enjoy it that's pretty um, cool and i i yeah, it's definitely. Seems so that's like the our, hope. My husband our... and I have agreed that we will go with or without my in-laws. Fair. So we're going to maybe totally go fair. anyway if yeah. they decide, uh, or if they d- realize maybe it's not going to work for them. That yeah, we I may would go. Yeah. Still go. Yeah. Yeah. I think that's probably what's going to happen. So I think that works. Well, fantastic. It sounds like we've yeah. got some some decent plans. So some all right, we're going to drink... break up the boredom. Yeah. Yeah, and occupy our children. Mm. Um. We're going to drink this briny melon ghost and it's got, Oh, I forgot to mention the logo. So this nice bear deer is named yeah. Barkley. Um, oh, he's got a so name. That's adorable. He has a name. His name is Barkley. Um, and effectively what the, it's, it's their mascot. It's a fictional character, which is part bear. So they took the B from bear and part deer. E E R beer. Uh, it's beer. Yeah. So. Yeah, I actually have a t shirt <laughs> that says beer and has oh, a has... bear deer on yeah, it. There you go. Uh but I got it from Mackinac Island. Wow. I, uh well this this is bark. But yeah. So you have bark. But yeah, now I'm kinda hand. like, well, okay. I mean this is probably what it's actually about. Right? But it doesn't say Anderson yeah. Valley or anything like that on but that, unfortunately. I think they, they might have stolen it. So Oh, the one <laughs> other thing I'm looking forward to this summer and it has nothing to do with my traveling my twins are going to sleep away camp for the first time oh, man. ever for an entire week from Sunday to Saturday. Wow. So all literally all week, no access to phones, no access wow. to electronics. We're going to see how it goes. So I'm... at the end of the summer, I'll be giving you an update yeah, on how I, it goes. We are weighing that possibility with my oldest doing like a music camp. Mm. Um. I know I told you about this, but he was invited to go on this huge, like, music trip next summer. Mm -hmm. Um, And it's in Hawaii. Yikes. And it's, (laughs) I'm really struggling with the thought of him going on this trip by himself. Yeah. uh, Because it's so far away. And so we're, like, going back and forth on does somebody go with or all this other stuff. And it's way off. So we haven't really addressed any of that yet. But my initial thought was we should try and do something away so he's away for from at least guys, a few days because he's yeah. never 
I mean, they've stayed, my kids have stayed at my in-laws for a night or two mm-hmm. over a weekend. Sure. Um, but not for an extended it. period even, of time. Yeah. Even sleepovers. My kids have not even slept over at somebody's house. Oh. So yeah. I might need think, to get used to it. Yeah. Yeah. I think we're going to try to get him into a camp where he maybe stays overnight, even if it's just a couple days. Mm -hmm. Like I found one in Wisconsin and then there's, uh, there's one at Western. Mm -hmm. Um, Uh, there's one not too far from us. That's only four nights. Oh, Um, okay. Um, my friend Megan's nephew goes there. Is it a music camp? I don't know what it is. Okay. We were talking, <laughs> so sorry. let me find out. I maybe didn't, because didn't I, say that. We were talking about maybe into doing something. art. Okay. And I know he plays an instrument, but I don't know if it's just a camp or if it's okay. a camp for that. So anyways. Fair. But let me find out. Yeah. yeah, you can let me know. I would be good. Well, an Elmhurst University does a music camp where you oh. can stay, um, okay. which would be great, but they're not doing it this summer. Oh, of course not. The one yeah, summer that you're because, like, I'm looking yeah. for it. I because there's some sort of I think they're like remodeling the auditorium or something wow. like it's some some like construction Just related bad reason. timing <laughs> yeah Bummer. yeah I mean I get I'll why they would do that over the summer but <laughs> one of my employees daughters is very into music she plays the violin mm-hmm. um and she is she I mean she they're moving but she had to audition to get into a school and she's only 13 so this isn't like and she auditioned but i i know she's been to different camps and things okay over the summer so i'll ask anyways all right let's drink this ghost here let's drink the ghost that's pretty much it guys that's the summer plan let's drink the ghost (laughs) let's drink the ghost let's drink the beer beer is in my summer plans Mm -hmm. yes that as well it tastes like watermelon to me I'm guessing that's why it's briny melon, but it's yeah. a salt. It's almost like a salty but watermelon does, to me. I was gonna say, but it does have like a yeah, like a salty. Yes. Which, yes. I, well, I've just identified it by also reading it on the can <laughs> and trying it. So they did great. They did. A so great they job did great because you would have described it as that without knowing what it was called. So I will say that unlike the first beer, I don't get all of that in the aroma. Mm-hmm. I do. It does have an aroma. It has a little bit of like the. Kind of like a salty, I don't want to say like a saltwatery smell, but no, it's got it's like... like salty and tart, but you can't yeah. tell what exactly. It doesn't smell like watermelon. It just right. smells like, I don't know. Yeah. I mean, you I don't can want to almost... say it smells like seawater. <laughs> no, it, it really doesn't. But it's like but a, it, yeah, it's got it, a little bit of that, like, it's got the, the saltiness salty... to it for sure. But when you taste it, you right. taste the salt and you taste the watermelon. Yeah, like definitely. that's exactly what this tastes like. So and it's Absolutely. got that tartness that a ghost has. Like this this is exactly as described <laughs> for oh, sure. Yeah. This oh, tastes yeah. like what you would expect this to taste like. So yeah, this actually would be a good summer drink, I think. Um, yeah. It's a you know what you could do with this beer? You can make beer mosa. Beer mosa. <laughs> I love it. All right. Yeah. We get to do that can. again now, Lauren. It's summer. Yay! <laughs> beer mosa time. Time for beer mosa. Beer mosa time. All right. I'm going to have to make my list of beers to have on hand for yeah. potential beer mosas for the summer. Sounds That's good. exactly what this is. Our pool's open. It's time. So. Yep. All right. Well, thank you, everybody, for joining us. Yeah. Thanks, guys. We'll catch you next time. Bye. Bye. Thanks, everyone, for listening to the latest musings from Parenting by the Pint. Be sure to find us on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram, and make sure that you rate, review, and subscribe to us wherever you find your podcasts. Have a great week, and cheers to you all. 